Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I'm Thelma Okoro. The Nigerian Air Force has destroyed a Boko Haram logistics base in Sambisa Forest, Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. A statement from the force says the attack was carried out by a formation of two Alpha jets and an FNI fighter aircraft. It also says the airstrikes are part of renewed air effort to neutralize the fleeing Boko Haram terrorists. Today marks the International Women's Day. It's a global day celebrating women and their various achievements. The International Women's Day also commemorates the movement for women's rights in all parts of the country. The theme for this year's celebration focuses on being bold for change. This is one mantra Nigerian women need to imbibe to survive more harsh realities they face in this part of the world, especially gender inequality and rights abuse. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, has refuted claims suggesting that Nigerians with valid visas and documents were denied entry into the United States. He also says there are no reports of Nigerians being turned back at any U.S. airport. Onyema's claims just come a day after the presidential aide, Abike Dabiru Erewa, advised Nigerians to postpone plans to travel to the United States. According to Onyema, Nigeria is not among the countries currently under U.S. travel ban. That Nigerians should be wary of going to the U.S., uh, that the U.S. might have taken measures uh, to stop Nigerians coming in. This is not the case. And I repeat, this is not the case. If the government is speaking on international relations, you will hear it from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you will hear it from the presidency. Any other source is not speaking for the government and is not definitive. And I, I, I've said that in the past and I repeat it again. The Nigerian government, the U.S. government has been reaching out to Nigeria. The president of the U.S. Uh, took the trouble to call our president and uh, to offer the hand of cooperation, see how he was doing, and to congratulate him on the excellent work he's been doing and, uh, and expressing the respect that they have for him, his leadership, and his government. The uh, Secretary of State of the United States called our president to echo exactly those same things and our cooperation with them is exemplary. Nigeria is on no list. Nigerians are on no list uh, banned by the US government and it really is business as usual and very good business it is with the US government. So any Anything else you hear in respect of the U.S. is incorrect and, um, and anybody who has the, uh, the, the documents, required documents to go to the U.S. or to go to any other country may should please proceed to, to do so. The Nigerian Senate has cancelled its proposed trip to South Africa. The Senate says its reasons for cancelling the trip is to allow the House of Representatives to send its committee as a single delegation of the Nigerian House of Assembly. The House of Representatives had already nominated Femi Bajabia Mila, who is the House leader, to lead five members of the lower legislative chamber to South Africa for the same reason. The lawmakers will be meeting with the South African Parliament to discuss xenophobic attacks on Nigerians in the country. Five people are said to have been killed in a clash at the Sabo area of Ilefe or Shun State. Eyewitness accounts say the crisis started on Tuesday night when a rift broke out between a Hausa man and a Yoruba woman, leaving five people dead and properties worth millions of Naira destroyed. Angry mob were seen destroying goods belonging to the Hausa traders at Legere in retaliation to the havoc done around the Sabo area. Meanwhile, security personnel from the Nigerian army and the Nigerian police force are trying to restore peace to the area. Nigeria's acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaje, has performed the groundbreaking for the commencement of work on the new Lagos Ibadan 
real project. Speaking at the ceremony, Oshibajo restated the federal government's resolve to revive and modernize road transportation in order to ease pressure on the Nigerian roads. He says the rail line will serve as a boost to the nation's economy. Our groundbreaking today reflects the plans of the federal government to build a globally competitive economy with first-rate infrastructure. The critical role of infrastructure, and for this purpose, railways, in this strategy is underscored by our economic recovery and growth plan, as well as the 2016 and 2017 budgets. We made provision for matching funds in the 2016 budget to complement the concessional loans obtained from the, from the People's Republic of China. Our appreciation goes to the Chinese government and the Chinese Exim Bank, who are and have always proved to be reliable partners to Nigeria. As some may be aware, we have the entire Lagos Kano Standard Gate track, as well as the Lagos Calabar Railway track in the 2017 budget. Negotiations on the Kaduna Kano portion of that of the track is now completed and this phase is next in line. We've already provided our portion of funding for the Lagos Calabar route as well. And we expect that negotiations on the foreign component of the funding will be finalized within the next three months. And that um, the Lagos Calabar project as well will come on screen. This ceremony marks a new dawn in the transformation of our transport infrastructure. We are excited about this project because it will further open up the economy of the Southwest region and facilitate regional integration and growth. The agricultural sector will receive a long awaited boost as this rail line will be a fast and convenient means of transporting farm produce from the hinterlands to the city thereby increasing the economies of these places. In addition, our proposed red line project will bring a new lease of life into our roads and highways. A direct benefit of this project is that containers and goods from their papa ports will now be transported by rail, thereby reducing the number of trailers and other heavy duty vehicles on our roads. The Nigerian government has finally unveiled its 2017-2020 till 2020 economic recovery plan. The plan seeks to focus on tackling constraints to growth, promoting the private sector, encouraging national cohesion and social inclusion, and allowing markets to function. According to the plan, the government hopes to raise Nigeria's oil production levels from 2.2 million barrels per day to 2.5 million barrels per day by 2020. The plan focuses on five main pillars, all geared towards diversifying the Nigerian economy. The Italian government has deported another batch of 37 Nigerians for committing immigration-related offenses in the country. This comes just two weeks after it deported 33 other Nigerians. The fresh 37 deportees arrived at the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos on Tuesday night. The deportees, all male, were brought back in a chartered aircraft. They were received by the officers of the Nigerian Immigration Service, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, and the Nigerian Police Force. Andrew Yakubu, the former Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, has asked the Federal High Court in Abuja to order the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to pay him 1 billion naira as compensation for violation of his human rights in his fundamental rights enforcement suit filed through his counsel. Yakubu is praying the court to shield him from further investigation by the EFCC. He is also requesting the agency to return the $9.7 million and 74,000 pounds seized from him by the agency. Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, has reiterated its commitment to the rule of law and improvement of the electoral process. National Commissioner in 
charge of the South South region, Mustafa Leki, said the commission respects Niger's democracy and will do its best to uphold it. Leki was speaking while presenting a certificate of return to Basi Etim, the court recognized winner of the Akwaibom Northeast Senatorial District elections at the commission's headquarters in Abuja. We must um, keep faith with our electoral process. We must um, hope fully on the uh, advancement of our electoral process. So, I know being an umpire has taken step to convince Nigerians that 2019 will be a wonderful, good election year. So we should continue to support the activities of um, INEC and make sure we support INEC to conduct credible elections. Um, I can say on behalf of the commission that the commission is a law abiding you know, entity. We obey laws, we don't disobey laws. And once there's a pronouncement in form of a judgment, we carry out such judgment. We do not play uh, politics you know, with judgment. We are an unbiased umpire. Uh, we are giving our assurance to Nigerians, our uh, commitment that that is what our next stands for. There may have been precedents, people to have doubts about the past, but this is a new INA going forward, especially since 2015, that we will carry out the judgment as pronounced by the court without fear and favor. We assure Nigerians of our neutrality in cases that go to court. Once the outcome is known, we carry it out without fear and favor. Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, may hold its national convention on the 30th of June 2017. This is part of the recommendations contained in the report submitted by the PDP Reconciliation Committee headed by the Bayelsa State Governor, Sarike Dixon, to the national chairman of the party, Ali Modu Sheriff in Abuja. But Sheriff says the recommendations would be subjected to some amendments by the leadership of the party before final decision would be taken on the conduct of the convention. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're welcome. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. I, I, okay, which came up with this one? Now? I don't understand. I mean, I mean, you know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back to News Now. Up next, we have business stories. Fidelia is standing by with the latest. Thank you, Thelma. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has credited commercial banks with $100 million for school fees, personal travel allowances, and medical bills abroad. This fresh injection by the Apex Bank brings the amount so far pumped into the interbank's forex market within the last two weeks to $1.1 billion. The CBN had directed all banks to open sales points in all its locations, including airports, to ensure that customers have access to foreign exchange without hindrance. A consortium of Nigerian banks, including Guarantee Trust Bank, Access Bank and Zenit Bank are set to take over the management of Etisalat Nigeria. This follows the inability of the network provider to pay back a loan facility totaling 541.8 billion naira obtained in 2015. The loan, which involved a foreign backed guarantee bond, was for Etisalat to finance a major network rehabilitation and expansion of its operational base in Nigeria. Oil prices dropped further below 56 
dollars a barrel on Wednesday after an industry report pointed to a large rise in crude inventories in the United States. Brent crude was down 54 cents to trade at $55.38 a barrel, while U.S. crude fell 57 cents to trade at $52.57 a barrel. U.S. crude supplies have continued to rise despite a supply cut that started on January 1st by the Organization of, the, of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, including Russia and other non-members. Data has suggested high compliance with the deal. Well, that's all on business. More stories coming up. Don't go away. Corruption not in my country. Mr. Job! Mr. Job! Ah, uh, uh, uh. what, what is it now? Please, turn, turn down your, the volume of your music, it's too loud. And how is that your business? It is disturbing me, I can't sleep. And the same way you are disturbing my right to good music, and where I enjoy it. Eh? What's wrong with you? Is there another person complaining? Uh, maybe we thought that uh, you have lost your mind. Please. Are you having a party? I'm just respecting you, sir. Remember, I've paid my husband too. You will not understand why we are complaining, because you do not care about other people, except yourself. Look! The transformation we need in this country begins in this compound. Yes, now. From you, you, and I. This, your selfishness is an offshoot of corruption. Uh -huh. And corruption, not, not in, in my, my country. country. Oh, we know. Eh? Can go, go to your bank. Go. Corruption, not in my country. More than 30 people have been killed after attackers dressed as doctors stormed the largest military hospital in Kabul. More than 50 people were also wounded in that attack. Militants armed with guns and grenades gained entry after one detonated explosives at a hospital gate and then opened fire on staff and patients. The so-called Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for that attack. Nigeria's sports minister Solomon Dalong has advised the president of the Nigerian Football Federation, Amadji Pinnick, to ensure he votes for the candidate who will serve Nigeria's football interest in the CAF presidential election. Speaking to newsmen, Dalong said Nigeria will only support the candidate who will aid the growth of Nigerian football. Very critical because we will be electing the president of a confederation of African football. Uh, the incumbent Hayatu has been there for quite some time, over uh, um, uh, two decades, um, close to three decades. Uh, he is being challenged by Amas from uh, Madagascar. And uh, the issue has been where does Nigeria stand? Well, Nigeria is a major player uh, in international relations and international politics. And in every major decision that Nigeria takes, it considers its national interest. Our national interest is very, very paramount. And our national in interest here in this election is the World Cup qualifier. Because anything that will affect our World Cup campaign will be against the national interest of Nigeria. We are consulting. We are also discussing. But since the election is secret ballot, uh, we will not be the only country that will come and present our ballot paper to Africa. And so we'll cons consult broadly and make sure that at the end of the day, uh, whatever decision that is taken finally as expressed in our vote will definitely represent what is the interest of the extra slots in the expanded 2026 World Cup tournament. The continent becomes the third continent to demand extra slots following requests from Africa and Europe. The 2026 World Cup will be the first tournament to include 48 teams. FIFA will have to debate continental allocations in May this year. A scheduled fight between Philippine boxer Manny Pacquiao and Britain's Ami Khan has been cancelled. This is according to the Philippines promoter Bob Arum, who described the fight scheduled for April 23rd as 
dead. The fight was originally arranged after Pacquiao's followers on Twitter voted Khan as the opponent they would like to see the 38-year-old fighter fight next. Pacquiao has not fought since the superb victory in his fight against Timothy Bradley Jr. on April 9, 2016. His promoter says he will fix another fight with an unnamed opponent very soon. Well, that's all we have on news now. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Thelma Okoro.